Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I was actually getting ready to uh, make a nice little video, but I kind of got caught up in this for just a second. Uh, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six C-130s Army aircraft carriers uh, that just went by and even though I've got everything for the video set up here okay there's seven so I just watched seven C-130s uh, pass overhead no, I've only seen that during wartime, so obviously something happened this morning. We probably won't find out about that. Anyways, let's get back to the reason I'm making a video here. Sorry. Alright, y'all y'all go back up there and play with toys. Um, I want to show y'all how to test and uh, diagnose uh, generator head problems. Uh, this video is going to be very important, you know, in a later date, uh, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> who knows. From what I just saw, um, could be today. Anywho, uh, let's get to the uh, reason why I'm making, making the video. Uh, got... That's okay, don't worry about it. They're just sitting there relaxing. Uh, Alright, took my grinder here. And I cleaned up the rotor on this one. Um, now, uh, may not look like much, but this rotor is twice as big as this rotor. Okay? Now, if you notice, there's a couple of different things. And I found out what's wrong with this one. Um, if you look right here, see this... Uh, from here to here and here to here we're missing some plastic it's supposed to have a plastic shroud going around all four corners and the other side is missing okay um, and I've, I've got a dead short in it <clears throat> and if you'll look right here there's the problem we're grounding out to here and I'm not building up a field on here with my AVR um, and it actually caused, if you'll notice, this AV, I'm sorry, automatic voltage regulator um, in uh, brushed alternators or uh, brushed generators, however you want to say that. So this is a self-excited generator and this is a uh, brushed generator. You'll notice it's got two rings here, copper rings, copper clads, uh, whatever you want to call them. And they have a, uh, a little adapter that has two brushes on it and it connects here. The positive is this side and the negative is this side and it's direct current. It's actually pulsed direct current um, using this right here uh, which is the exact same way a car alternator works because a car alternator uh, makes alternating current as well but instead of feeding it into uh, into a bridge here or into a uh, D block, um, it uh, feeds it into a set of diodes which uh, direct the flow of current uh, from uh, back and forth to one direction. Uh, instead of it moving back and forth this way, alternating current, uh, it goes in one direction, just like the C140s. So, um, I've got some emails. Uh, people are wanting to know how you get a neutral um, from alternating current because, well, uh, it's very confusing to people. Um, it's really not that hard. Um, if you'll look here, you've got one, two, three, four wires coming out of here. Okay, uh, this is connected to the ground. Um, this coil goes to this coil and this this coil wire goes to this coil wire so it's really not as difficult as everybody thinks you'll see here uh, one two three four five six 
Now, what that is, is there's two wires. Right here is two wires, okay? You got one here and one here. Now, it goes in here and in through there. Out there, back into here. Out here, back into the second one. Back into the second one here. Over, down to the third one. Goes down, up to the third one over here. Back over to the fourth one. And continues all the way around. So, here's one wire here. And you've got two ends of the wire on the other side that I just showed you. One wire over here. And it's two ends of the other wire over on the, on the other side. Oops. Dropped a uh, ground wire. That's okay. I'm not using this right now. Anyways. Um... Now I'm going to show you how to diagnose this and how to test it, see if it's if it's uh, actually working or not working, what's going on with it, how to fix it. Um, a stator coil cost for this right here, a stator co coil. I'm sorry, for this one, a stator coil cost two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. The generator head itself, with the outside casing, the front, the back, uh, the bearings. Every bit of it um, costs two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So for thirty dollars more than you can buy this wire, you can buy the whole generator head. That's how they get you. All right. So let me explain this to you. Um, I showed you how um, this wire goes in and comes back out to this wire, and this wire goes in and comes back out to this wire. So it's basically wired in star. This one touches this one. And then the other end of this wire touches this one as well. Now you take the ground from the casing and it goes to the other end of it. That is how you create a neutral wire. You ground out your other end of your positive wires and you get a neutral wire. That way the current can go back and forth and oscillate when the rotor on the inside is turning creating a magnetic field and it's throwing it outwards into your coils here creating a charge now it's a little bit different on a self-excited generator head you basically just have two extra coils on your uh, on your stator coil here now if you'll notice on this brushed alternator or generator we're missing one two three four uh, five you see that it's on both sides you see how there's coils missing off of there now if you'll look at this one right here there are no coils missing this is a self-excited generator head this is a brush generator head if you'll look on this rotor here you got your positive input your negative input okay now on this rotor over here there is no input this is a self-excited rotor now the difference between this one and that one is this one has capacitors and diodes see the diode and the capacitor the capacitor is to regulate the voltage inside of this when it gets up to speed the stat excuse me the static electricity from the heat moving around creates a little bit of a charge and it builds up real quick because it has the capacitors in there they also hold a charge but they regulate that charge coming out now if you want to check and see if this rotor is any good you're gonna have to desolder one side of this wire because this capacitor is touching both sides uh, making a connection so you can't check this diode with this capacitor hooked up now if you'll notice I, I do have my soldering gun sitting here and, and I've already checked this just double checked it to make sure that it's good and it is good I took my grinder and I cleaned it up nice and pretty and I'm going to take some uh, penetrating oil uh, you don't want to use WD-40 because WD-40 is water-based, and what happens when you put metal in water? Well, it rusts. So you want to use some type of oil, cooking oil, whatever you want to use. Cooking oil will probably heat up and, and dissipate really fast, so penetrating oil is really the way you want to go. Now, let me explain how the self-exciting generator head uh, 
well, oh wait, no, all right, I'll just explain that. Oh, look at there, I'm ahead of myself. So, what are we at, 10 minutes here? All right, um, AVR, here we go. We've got a capacitor. We've got a, uh, uh, we've got a little dial here that, uh, it's actually, this can control uh, the capacitance and allow you to raise or lower your voltage. Um, this right here is basically how much charge it can hold uh, in here because this is technically, um, I mean, if I put my fingertips there, it's about as long as my fingers. My fingers are not very long. I've got short fingers. That's a 4,000 watt uh, generator head. Now, if you'll look at this one, it is literally twice, a little bit more than twice the size of the other one. And this is not, uh, this is a better type of uh, three-phase motor, sorry, uh, three-phase generator. I'm sorry, self-excited generator head. All of those were correct, but let's use terms that don't get into arguments with. Um, I can actually... Uh, make this turn just like a motor uh, by connecting a positive and negative um, to this uh, the two red wires or the white and the black wire here um, you can do that pretty easily okay um, now on the self excited generator head you've got these wires right here and this is a coil wire uh, that goes in and it's in between the two uh, not field coils, but uh, stator coils. It's it's in between the two stator coils here. Okay. Now on this one, uh, you'll notice it's just like the other one. It's got uh, one wire here and one wire here. The two red ones. I'm sorry, I was looking at it wrong. The white and black wire is one wire, and these two red wires is one wire, and it's wrapped in and out all the way around on this side. And the black and white wires wrapped in and out all the way on this side. Now these two yellow wires here are wrapped in and out in between this one and in between this one. Okay, now in order to check these with your voltage meter, um, all you got to do is just, well, stick the voltage meter in the end, duh. But you want to check and make sure that there's resistance, that, uh, that you do have a good amount of ohms on here. Uh, low ohms means uh, that you're going to say it's 10,000 watt. Well, that means you're going to get about it's rated for 7,200 watts continuous, but you don't get that. You get about 6,500 watts continuous, um, which is enough to run my house. I don't have but uh, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and uh, you can run an air conditioner, I can run everything out in my shop, uh, providing I'm not running a bunch of power tools all at once. Uh, I can run three or four TVs, all the lights. Um, so, technically, uh, this does work. This is good enough. You can run an air conditioner, you can run all your TVs, your fridge, and some lights. Um, and two or three fans with about 6,000 watts. So... I'm gonna get my uh, I'm gonna get my drill and my other wire brush attachment that goes to my drill here, and I'm gonna clean all this up. I'm gonna get this put back together. But before I do that, I want you guys to see what the readings are. And if you don't have these readings, then you don't have a good alternator or generator. It's a alternator because it produces alternating current, but. It is uh, technically called a self-exciting generator head. So, let's see here. Now you should have a multitude of three times whatever is uh, between your field wires and uh, your collector coils. Your, your field coil and your collector coil. Um, so, if you look here, we're getting nine, eight and a half. We're going to say eight and a half. Probably supposed to be nine, but eight and a half maybe my meter just a tad bit off um, not really sure so we do nine divided by three that would be three so we're probably gonna get two and a half or three on this other one here and um,
Yeah, what? No, I was looking at it right earlier. Yeah. Anyways, uh, there we go. The uh, let me let me go ahead and correct myself from earlier. This red wire and this black wire that's on the plug are one coil, and this white wire and this red wire. Let me see here. This white wire and this red wire here and here are one coil and this black wire and this other red wire are the other coil. So I see it fluctuated between two and three so we got two and a half. Now disconnect it, reconnect it. Yeah, between two and three. So we divide, uh, yeah. 9 divided by 3 is 3, so we got that about right. It's a 2.5. Alright, let's go to the other coil. We should get the exact same reading on the other coil. If not, then we're going to have a uh, difference in voltage. It's not going to be a very good generator head if it's a difference. Uh-oh. Uh there we go. 2.5, 3. 2.5, 3. It needs to stop and stay on 2. All right, we've got a good generator head. All right, and I just want to say thank you guys for watching my videos. It's it's what puts food on the table. It's what it's what keeps us going. It really does. And I don't mind sharing all this information with you guys for free. Um, I, technically, I could charge money for every video that I post online, but there are poor people out there that cannot afford to pay to watch videos, and I'm not going to do that to them. I make all my videos for people who can't afford uh, the finer things, and what good would it be doing if I uh, took them out of the equation altogether? So, I'm sorry if, if I have to go without food or something because I won't charge for my videos. Um, I'm not going to do that to other people. So, um, let's go ahead and check this small alt, uh, generator head here, and it's been through some crap, so... Yeah, let's just see here. Uh, now, now on this one, uh, I didn't tell you, but it is the same as the other one. Um, you take uh, you take the ends of two of your hot wires, so the white and red one, or uh, the red and black one, would be connected to a ground, and that will give you a neutral. Um, the other the other ends of them will be. Uh, just like on this one, the other ends on there will be your uh, 110 out, and that's uh, that goes to each side of your panel. So, uh, I guess after I show you these two, we'll go to the car alternator, and I'll show you how that one's wired and how you can get the same effect out of it. Now, keep in mind, you will have to modify some things on it. Um, you can make it a self-excited generator head, or... You could hook up AVR to it, but these things right here, uh, this one cost me $25.99 plus tax. Um, and the reason why this is not hooked up is because, uh, if you look right here, this little capacitor in there blew out. Um, I may have overloaded the, the alternator here or something. Like I said, it's only 4,000 watt alternator heads or generator heads, so um, it's, uh, it, it's not... You know, it's not real tough. And there's... Uh, hopefully we can uh, add this video into the last video. I got a phone call while I was making video, so... Uh, sorry about that. But, uh, let me jump right back into where I was. Um, if you take... Let me go ahead and get this off here. <sighs> one-headed camera work you gotta learn the uh, trader you'll never be able to do it all right so just like in the other one we've got two blue wires here that is the wires that are going to be tied together on the other end and they're going to be connected to ground now over here we've got the white and black wire just like here and that is actually going to go to your AVR and then come out of your AVR. Uh, it feeds back in um, and it actually goes and it uh, it excites your rotor here. So uh, you've got 
power that's being thrown from the inside to the outside. Now the difference in these two, okay, this thing right here, uh, when they make these, they actually take a battery and they connect it to the red and the black wire here that connects to, uh, it connects to your, your rings here, okay, you got your positive here and your negative here. Uh, and what this does is it charges your coils in here and it also holds a charge in this, this capacitor. Um, that's how it's able to excite this rotor here. Um, and this is just called a rotor because it rotates. Uh, some of them have the field that uh, the stator rotates and some of them have the uh, field to where, well, they, the rotor is always rotating, the stator is always uh, stationary. But the outside could rotate and the inside could stay, you know what I mean? Uh, I wouldn't see why they would do that because you're throwing the power from the inside going out with it rotating. So um, you would be losing a lot, of, a lot of power by doing it that way. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I told you guys that I was going to show you the alternator and how we get the same effect from the alternator that we're getting with this. And there's two different ways of doing it because there's two different ways of, well, making a generator. So, let me pause it real quick, grab the alternator, and I will give you an explanation on that. Because I don't want you hooking the alternator directly up to your panel and frying everything. Um, <clears throat> this video is going to, well, it's going to enlighten a lot of people out there. And if you learned anything from this video, then please show your appreciation and throw me ten bucks as a donation. Um, you don't have to. I'm not, you know, I'm not asking anybody out there who's hurting for money to send me money. Please don't send me money if you're in the same boat as I am. Okay, I just want to get this spread to the world and, and I want people to be a little bit more self-dependent. Okay, so let me grab this alternator and I'll meet you back here before, well, oh look, you can see the cameraman. All right. I don't know exactly what all happened there, but the video got paused. That's great. I just noticed it. I don't know where it was at, so let me explain this again. Um, you tie these three wires together. Um, this is one end of the other. There's three coil wires here inside, and that's on the stator on the outside of it. Okay. Now, the rotor on the inside goes to these and it's one wire. It goes here's the one wire end and the other end of the wire. That's for your stator. You're gonna pull direct current into there. Um, now for your output, you want to wire these three wires or these three wires together. But these three are the ones that I chose. Um, the other ends of these three wires together, and you're going to tie them to the ground wire here. Okay, now you're also going to take that ground wire, now these three wires, or these four wires now, and you're going to wire them to the ground pole that's in the dirt outside your house. Okay, and when you do this, this is going to be your neutral wire, and these three wires are going to have an output to them. Depending on how fast you turn it, will give you your hertz, and depending on how fast you turn it, it will be how high your voltage is. Now, <clears throat> you can use capacitor as voltage regulator. Um, you can also uh, take your field coil here and you can put a diode on it and a capacitor on it. And that will help out a whole lot and save you a whole lot of trouble. Um, but keep in mind, this will be a three phase output. Um, you don't have to use all three phases, but. Um, I would recommend, you know, uh, well, you could run one uh, to your shop and then the other two to your house. You'd have 110 in your shop and you'd have 220 in your house. But you're going to have to turn this thing at 3,600 RPMs to get your 60 hertz. Because each revolution would be one pulse. You need 60 pulses per second to get 60 hertz. That would be 60 seconds times 60 pulses, which is what you want, 
that equals 3,600 revolutions per minute. Or you can take, you got 3,600 revolutions per minute, divide it by one minute, which is 60 seconds, and that'll give you 60 pulses per second. So either way you want to do the math, it works out the same. It's the exact same equations, just saying it forward and backwards. But to get 60 hertz, you're going to have to turn this at 3,600 RPMs. Uh, in between uh, uh, 3,000 and 3,600 RPMs. So, um, can't think of anything else. Uh, like I said, um, you want to you want to regulate the voltage. You add you some capacitance. Um, you can take a ceramic capacitor and a diode and put here. On your rotor, <coughs> just the same as this one's done, and you will have a self-excited generator. Um, this, I believe, is a 10 amp diode. I, I can't really see any number. Oh wait, wait, hang on. There's a one and a zero. I can't really see anything. Let me see if I can get it with my camera. Yeah, one and a zero. So that that is a 10 amp diode, and uh, I'm sure that's the 400 volt or above uh, ceramic capacitor. But to get your alternator to self excite, you will have to be turning it, and you will have to put a positive and negative. Uh, from a battery charge to the field wires while you got the uh, capacitor and diode on there. So you'll have to hold it on here for a few seconds. It would be the same thing as uh, ex exciting a uh, self-excited generator head. Now you may have to do it every time but you shouldn't have to do it every time uh, the way I've calculated it. Uh, it should keep a charge. It should stay magnetized and once uh, once you get it going, it'll build up on its own. And uh, also, that will um, regulate the voltage in there. Um, you won't have to worry about modifying near as much. Um, but you still have to move that rotor, uh, <coughs> which is the whole reason why I'm using, I personally am using uh, this as a motor and this as a generator because that is a whole lot bigger than that or that one if you'll notice this right here is not much bigger than this um, maybe twice the size and and I say twice the size because um, your rotor coil is got twice as much wire than this one and your stator coil has uh, probably three times as much as this one now this produces 90 amps, but that's at 12 volts, um, which, if you calculate it, that's 1,080 watts. Um, amps times volts equals watts. So you've got uh, you've got choices here, you know, on how to power your house uh, when crap hits the fan, but. Um, you know, you always got somebody like me who's willing to, willing to share, you know, his knowledge with you for free, so, I just, uh, I really hate all the nasty comments and stuff online, but I understand there's a lot of immature people out there, which is why I waited until Allison was crying, uh, so that they wouldn't watch the whole video, and they wouldn't want to reach out to me, and, uh, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, just pass me right on up, and I'm sure glad they do. I don't want people that are not good people trying to get in touch with me and trying to trick me into, you know, helping them out. And I don't, you know, I believe you should work for what you have. You know, nothing in life is free. You know, you have, this This is free energy, but you have to have energy to make energy. Um Initially, you've got to charge that uh, generator head before it starts producing energy on its own. Now, you may only have to charge it once, and the next time you start it up, it'll it'll go. 
but it's got to be charged so you guys learned anything from this video don't forget to hit the like button and if you would like to see more videos um, completely organic gardening um, things of that nature uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the little notification button on there so that you get notified uh, when my videos are posted um, I don't know if I have enough data to get this posted today or not and uh, again congratulations Cody on winning the uh, signal generator pulse width modulator I uh, couldn't have I couldn't have prayed for someone better to win it uh, I love you so much and man I'm uh, I'm really sorry about your mom I know today is the anniversary one year anniversary of your mom passing and everything but um, it'll get easier with time, brother. It will. All right. Well, I got to get off here. I got a lot of work to do, and I don't know how long my back's going to last, so I got to go. Love you guys. Have a great day.